proposed film is called Breath. Mm, uh, like this okay, so about the film, um, it's like an action slash crime thriller, um, and it involves a teenage boy and an older man, like in a suit and professional <coughs> suit man. And um, but we we know nothing about the man, um, and it involves quite a lot of action, and um, I'm, I will try and create like a sense of enigma and ask a few questions that won't be answered, like, mm -hmm. who is he, what is he doing, why is he doing it, and will he be, access be successful in doing it? So, um, the action, so, uh, it's a very eventful opening, and uh, we cut back and forth between the man, the hitman, and the cyclist, and... Um, Who's the cyclist? That's the boy? Yeah, yes, yeah, about a 13 to 15 year old boy, um, and we, we follow follow them both through cross-cutting. Um, the man is like driving up to the scene, um, getting out of his car, pulling up to the, and then the boy is getting ready to just have a normal cycle around the park like a normal day, but obviously it has extraordinary consequences. Um, so the, the boy is pictured out as quite innocent and not knowing what's going on, and the hitman is obviously going there with some intent of murder. Um, and then we see, as the boy goes into the park, we see a similar man on the bench. And the audience thinks that's the murderer, but we later find out that there's another person who killed him. Uh, he, just, he just looks similar to the person we saw behind the wheel. Um, and we track, the, we track the man's feet as he walks up to the cyclist and quite literally just like shoots him. Uh, we see the trigger being pulled. And, uh, In the park? Yeah. But <laughs> I'm gonna have to get a few commissions first. <laughs> um, and but we don't actually see the boy getting shot. We just see people's reactions and like their shock faces and everything. And obviously the the sound of the gunshot. And uh, the the scene ends when uh, we get a point of view shot of the body in the boot and the man closing the boot. But I'll shoot it in such a way that you don't get to see his face still. Okay, themes. Um, during the, this opening, I'd be, I'd like the audience to feel like, fear and sympathy towards the the young boy, and um, this is this fear is like is amplified by the fact that the boy seems to originate from like a loving family. Um, so the like some of the props at the start would be like family photos and like I don't know car keys or something like laid on it, just like normal family life. And then hopefully the audience can like relate to that. So he leaves his home. Yeah, yeah. And gets on his bike. Yeah, okay. and then yeah, and then hopefully that will make it more like realistic. And the narrative, uh, the opening follows events that will happen like simultaneously. So as you, as I said, we'll be cross cutting between two people, and it'll be this, these events will be happening at the same time. Um, there is no dialogue, um, but just. There is diegetic and non-diegetic sound, mm -hmm. um, like non-diegetic would be like the soundtrack and stuff, and diegetic would be like the gunshot and little, I guess the, the sound of the bike mm -hmm. cycling. The gunshot, you got, you got real gun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll, I'll have to, I'm sure sound. we can find that online though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Copyright. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get through customs and <laughs> 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 the characters. Um, one of the following, uh, wait, sorry, one of the uh, characters will be like the, like the suited man um, with like glasses and everything and all suited and booted, looking very official and about 30 to 40 years old. Um, and there's also like a young teenage boy, he'll be the cyclist. Um, but other than, other than these two characters, there are a few characters in this, uh, in this opening. Um, but we will have two people dressed like this because the person we see earlier on the bench we want the audience to think that, that that's the murderer but then we later find out it isn't but if they're wearing two different things then it's going to be obvious that it's not him um, so we are, I only need about three or four actors adults? Uh, yeah, about two adults and like two teenagers maybe and the setting uh, I'm <laughs> I'm a bit doubtful on the Centenary Park, I don't know, because mm. maybe it maybe it'll take away from the realism. Uh, but it'll be set in a park, mostly. 
and because um, that kind of re meets all the requirements that I need out of the sea and um, I might also need like a lakeside setting as well but um, but um, what form? Um, because I'm thinking about like chucking the body in the in, in like the, the lake. lake after to like dispose of it. Okay. Um, but I haven't. That's not really set in stone yet. Okay. Um, mise en scène. Uh, so as I said at the start, I'd like all the different like family props and everything uh, relating to family life at the start. Uh, and the man like dressed. That's how sort of how he's going to be dressed. Like in a black suit, tie, and, and sunglasses, and um, this gives me like a mysterious and villainous, <coughs> villainous look, uh, and <coughs> looks quite professional with Hitman's on. Um, uh, he like a large part of it is going to take place in the park, obviously, so there's not too much mise on scene. Um, yeah. Uh, camera work, uh, I'll be using like a variety of different unique and interesting um, camera angles uh, to utilise the equipment I have. Uh, so like a, just for example like a time lapse and a helmet cam and all sorts of like different, as I, I, I took that book the other day, I need to get it back now, mm -hmm. but, um, but just some interesting shots mm -hmm. that get me some marks I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Why uh, the time lapse what for? Uh, just like a, an establishing shot of the park and just saying like what time it is and where it's taking place I guess. Uh, and to film, yeah, I'll be using those two things. But that that's like a little action cam thing, you can just attach anywhere basically. Mm -hmm. um, editing, uh, I'd like, I'll be using quite a lot of cross cuts, like quick cross cuts because I want the, the editing to be kind of high tempo and mm -hmm. build up the tension. Um, and like no, no like animated transitions or anything because no. that will like take away from it because um, I want it to be more like an intense like and frantic Gritty. frantic scene. Um, I will be using like some screen like spitting you know where there's like four four pictures in one. What do you call that? Uh, split screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I will be using that for one one part of it just to show like all these events happening at the same time. Um, and obviously the text for the credits will be in the editing as well. Um, audience, I'd like my target audience to be about 18 to 40 years old, um, who have like an interest in these kind of things. Uh, but it's like unisex, so it's not really targeted at one gender. Um, it's just anyone who likes likes thriller films, I guess. Um, but I think it probably starts at 18 because people like lower age. It might be a bit unsuitable for them, like the murder and, and the killing and everything. Um, but there is a current, currently a big market for thrillers, as we saw for like Skyfall and stuff being like hugely, hugely successful. Um, and hopefully, I can target some of those people. And that's just like a, that's just like a, um, yeah, a rough storyboard. Yeah. Did you draw that? Yeah. <laughs> Don't that's look what at you have to do, you guys. Yeah. It's a good start because we actually see some of the angles, some of the frames, you know. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully I can expand on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Thanks. Uh, once again, the target audience is problematic. We're going to have to do quite a bit of research. I mean, mm -hmm. it's always an area that in the blogs I've moderated in the past for other centres, it's always the weakest point. Mm. Um, not only do you have to look at similar films to see what kind of certificate they went for, um, but yeah, you have to follow the guidance. And I think if you wanted to do a thriller that appeals to a wide audience, you can't mm. go for an 18 certificate. Yeah, yeah that's you true. You can't. Yeah. You have to do something much lower, probably 12A yeah. or something. Mm. Um, I mean, the, if you think about, oh, I haven't looked at here, 18 certificate, you think about things like, oh, yeah, you're right, the team is there. You know, Cape Fear, which is mm. you know, there's elements of rape and torture. Mm. Mm. So then, of course, you can you know you have to go up to an 18. I suppose like, a lot of the thrillers are actually 15. Something like Skyfall, that's like that is 12. And it's obviously something that you need to think long and hard about mm. because if you go for a 15, it might appeal more to people. There might be a sense that it might be a little bit more. Okay. 
um, I don't know, gritty yeah. and uh, mm. the pain in that way, but you are going to lose a pin at the box office, for example, you know, the, first, yeah. the opening weekend, if you imagine yeah. that, and it's limited to uh, 15 rather than 12. Mm. Money. What what eight is Sky Hall? Twelve A. Twelve A. That's what you need to do. They drop it down so one of the mm. things you need to do is to investigate a little, look at similar um, thrillers, and, mm. and investigate why they've been awarded certain um, certificate. And what happens as well is that sometimes they recut it slightly yeah. for the DVD release. Mm. So. They have a slightly different um, edit. So yeah, it's like 12 for the cinema and then like Exactly. Mm. So they cut a few things out for you know the release in, in, in cinemas. Mm. There was Just a film, I can't remember which one it was recently, not well, recently, but like a year or two ago, where they had took out like one, literally one scene. Yeah, and it's usually really, really hotly debated, you know, with yeah. the BBFC. Yeah. They, you know, they're really trying to push and push by lower certificate. Mm. And, and often you've got these massive debates. There's actually, there was, um, they're doing a, um, a survey at the moment, the BBFC. Yeah, yeah. They are interviewing tons and tons of people because every, what, three, four, five years, I can't remember when, they do a review of their certificates to see how audiences respond to yeah, mm. their decisions. And what was um, unacceptable a few years ago seems to be okay now. So, I mean, there's a lot of work to be done around that. Mm. Um, Apart from that, come on guys, some reactions. Can I just, can I, in a narrative, is it like a hide hitman killing killing a boy? Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. So, by the end of your film opening, we don't know who the hero is going to be. No. no we, and we, I, I've done everything I can to try and... And your victim and, is disposable. Yeah, yeah. And I've done every, everything I can to, like, make... The hitman, just, you don't don't know anything about him. He's just like a he's just like a white male in a, in a suit. That's all we know about him. You don't get to see his like face or anything. Do you ever get to hear like the call, like someone asking the person to do it or anything? No, we we don't know why he's done it either. Um, that's the whole building the enigma sort of thing. You know, you said you're going to use no dialogue, right? Mm -hmm. I I'm, I would be tempted to maybe use like one line or something. Just to give your victim a little bit more depth, mm. possibly. As you know, he leaves home, as he leaves home, yeah, like just by mum or something. Yeah, just something really small. Just yeah. What I was thinking, um, I was going to do that, but then I don't know. With dialogue, it's it's hard with dialogue in thrillers. I was going to um, when he goes out the door, just like have like a little note saying I'll be back soon or something, XX or something. Mm. Um, why would a hitman That's what shoot thinking. a boy in broad daylight in the park? That's the thing you're questioning. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know he's a hitman though? Sorry? How do you know he's a hitman if there's no call before? Well, um, it could just be a random person shooting someone. I mean, it, particularly if the kid is riding his bike, it would make more sense for a hitman to hit, actually hit him, you know. I'm not suggesting you do that. But it would make more sense, you know, kind mm. of a hit and run. <coughs> type thing. I, I, I would, I would be more inclined to make the hitman a bit more ambiguous, because at the moment you've got that sort of cliche hitman look. Yeah, yeah. If you just was just a, a normal person, mm. then that would leave more questions. Yeah. If the audience didn't necessarily know, yeah, he was a hitman. Mm. Um, I mean, you changed quite a few things since Friday. I yeah. Mean, um, I remember some of the stuff that Sarah said to you. Uh, was that he would prefer that you didn't know who the boy was, you didn't see him. So change it round and then you know who the hitman was? Or no, the... I think Sir said something about the, the, the bicycle wheel spinning. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he said he quite liked the idea of yeah, the wheel uh, uh, yeah, and yeah. someone going somewhere, you didn't know who it was. And yeah. then you sort of see the bike hmm. uh, collapse to the floor and then someone dragging this person off. Hmm. Um, so you sort of Removed the ambiguity and made it a bit more definitive, which I, personally I think makes it less dramatic. It's just okay. my personal opinion. I can't mm. agree with Serna. Right. And you're not brandishing <coughs> a fake gun in the park. Uh, no, you, only, you you get to see like a trigger being pulled, but but not the actual <coughs> okay. whole thing. Um, and you can hear the mind hearing the gunshot. Yeah, yeah, you can hear the gunshot. You can see the trigger, but that's about it. 
you don't see it like hitting the boy or and you just see maybe you want to consider changing the location someone's yeah. going to shoot someone in broad daylight you've got to do that i mean if you if you shoot that yeah. you need mm. to do it in a garden a private garden or somewhere yeah yeah not in public mm. not taking that risk okay. mm. <laughs> Bad memories. <laughs> right. <laughs> what if you change your victim completely to, to like an older person? I'm just thinking on a really simplistic level, like a really simplistic level. Why would someone pay like money to hire a hitman to kill a child? What's I don't think I don't think that's a bad thing. I quite like that idea. That oh, it's like a yeah, because it's a bit unusual. So you it, it makes you want to know why someone would kill a child. But it depends on the area, though, because like if it was say like in an estate, then that child would be like, in like being stereotypical here, like it attracts you, blah blah blah. That child could have like double crossed like his boss kind of thing, and then that's where the reason for why he's, do you know what I mean? Why he's dating yeah, yeah. But then how do we know? How do we know he's a hitman and it's not something personal? Because I'd assume it's personal if someone's killing a child. Yeah, it's true. See, for me, it would make more sense if the kid, once we see him in the boot, is actually not dead. So yeah, rather than shooting him, yeah. you, you, you've got a kidnapping or something like that. That's what I actually, well, yeah, you did say the gunshot on Friday, but I did think it was a kidnapping, actually. Oh, right. I actually did think it was kidnapping. I didn't know he was dead. Hmm. Um, would it be better as a kidnapping? Yeah. I think it would make more sense. Yeah. yeah. It would look a lot more real mm. from gunshots mm. and stuff. Because that, that child could be anybody. He could